22nd is Tecumseh's day. Tecumseh, Tecumseh, Tecumseh. When you say the name of the dead to the earth, they're still alive. Tecumseh, Tecumseh, Tecumseh. And Little Turtle. Little Turtle is the man of the hour today. So on October 22nd, 1790, you're going to have Hamar's defeat, Hamar's shame. Hamar's defeat, Hamar's shame, which the last of the three battles is going to be called the Battle of the Pumpkin Fields. So it began October 19th and the 20th and the 21st, and then it's going to end the 22nd. The first battle was Hardin's defeat. The second was Hart Shorn's defeat. And then the 21st, the last battle was the Battle of the Pumpkin Fields. And the reason why they call it the Battle of the Pumpkin Fields is because of all of the um, skeleton skulls. So the skeleton skulls of the American soldier what you know they're killed this is one of the worst military disasters for the u.s army so the skulls were killed and scalped and when they looked at the skulls that were killed and scalped it looked to them like pumpkins to the native americans or so that's the english that i've read so josiah harmar josiah harmar harmar's defeat this is under george washington 1790, the country just was formed one year ago. One year ago, you had the Constitution. He just became president for a single year. And what does George Washington do as soon as he gets into the presidency? He starts killing Native Americans on the western side of Ohio. Did Congress declare the war on the Wabash Natives? Nope. Congress didn't declare that war either. That was just a war that just happened, and... The George Washington was for it. The executive branch was for it. Nobody stopped it. The legislature did not declare war on the Wabash Indians in 1790, or the natives, the aborigines. So just to talk about some of the details, it's Tecumseh's day because one of the you know highlights of Tecumseh was not only Homer's defeat, but he's also going to come back with the St. Clair's defeat. He also took a tomahawk and chucked it at William Henry Harrison, the guy that, you know, eventually going to be the president. Tecumseh was also correct. He wanted a unified Native American confederacy to be a bulwark against white Western expansion, which is common sense. That was the fear that, you know, there's going to be a general Native American uprising when there was a bunch of, you know, um, murders that had happened in 1774 with uh, Tal Gaeta and, um, you know, the Battle of Point Pleasant, uh, that war over there. So, uh, Lord Dunmore's War. In Lord Dunmore's War, Tecumseh's going to get killed. I hear that Tecumseh's born in Ohio. They're trying to claim him. But I heard that he was born in a skip of Kithiki, which is in northern Kentucky. And where the heck are any of the Native Americans born? How would they even know that? Tecumseh's father is going to get killed, 1774. And then Tecumseh is there with Little Turtle in the Miami. So you have the American troops. George Washington is going to send Hamar to go kill the Miami, to go kill the Delaware, to go kill the Ottawa, the Delaware, the Ottawa, and the Shawnee. The Shawnee, which is Tecumseh. The Shawnee is Tecumseh, and let's say Blue Jacket and some other ones, too. But I know for sure Tecumseh was there at Hamar's defeat, and he was also there at St. Clair's defeat. Again, this is the, you know, one of the worst disasters for the U.S. Army on American soil. And that's, I don't, you know, particularly as an American, I don't like that. But as a Native American, I do like that, because what the fuck so this is in Cincinnati, okay? It starts out at Cincinnati. It goes eventually to Wabash, uh, Indiana, Fort uh, Wayne, Indiana. So they start off in Cincinnati. Henry Knox orders Josiah H Hamar to end the Native American attack on the western frontier. So this is George Washington telling his Secretary of War, Secretary of Defense, saying we've got to go into Ohio and, you know, kill a bunch of Miami, Shawnee, Delaware, and Ottawa people. So there's 320 regulars and 1,100 militia men from Pennsylvania and Kentucky. Some of them didn't have any guns. So they marched over there with 1,400 men, marched to Fort Wayne, Indiana from Cincinnati, intending to attack the Ottawa, Delaware, Shawnee, and Miami. The natives are going to flee. Not, they're not going to do it Russian style. They're just going to run away. They didn't set fire to their own house. But when the 
the uh, U.S. Army gets to the natives, to Fort Wayne, to the Ottawa and the Shawnee and the Delaware, they abandon their village, and the U.S. Army burns their villages down. So that's uh, Cannot Talk Carius. George Washington is known as the great village destroyer. So, again, this is just him being, you know, the same genocidal maniac that we've seen, George Washington. He killed all those people in, you know, the five tribes, the five civilized tribes in New York with the Seneca or the Iroquois. So he killed, you know, he already did some genocide, and now he's doing some more genocide. And why? Because the people of Ohio, the people of Ohio, they need the land that the Native Americans have. So the white of, you know, the whites of Ohio need to steal Tecumseh's land in Miami and Shawnee and Delaware's land. So of the 1,400, the first day you're going to have Little Turtle in the Miami. They're going to ambush Hamar. They said, oh, no, they ambushed Hamar. Um, Hardin's defeat, they said that Hardin, they just kept on riding into the ambush, and then the first day, 183 men are going to get killed, or that's between the two days. There's a ton of numbers, actually. So there's one here that says in St. Clair's defeat, 900 are going to get killed. So I think that's, you know, 183 is the total of the three days of fighting. So, let's see, the first day you have, you know, a whole bunch of people that got killed. Not 183, but eventually it's going to total to 183. And then after that first ambush, Hamar gets ambushed, and then he sends out another detachment several days later to attack Chief Legris. L-E-G-R-I-S. Legris. Legris. Chief Legris. Who the hell is Chief Legris? And then Little Turtle of the Miami. Little uh, Turtle of the Miami. He had a very distinctive name that I wanted to say out loud. Me si kinakwa. Me si Me si kinakwa. Me si kinakwa. So me si kinakwa, little turtle. He's a sagamore of the Miami people, one of the most famous Native American military leaders. So after the two successes, right, you're going to have like a 1795 um, a Treaty of something Greenville, something Mad, Mad Anthony Wayne. And then you're going to have the Miami and Little Turtle's going to capitulate. And then eventually Little Turtle's going to tell people not to join Tecumseh's Confederacy during, you know, the War of 1812. Which is unfortunate because Little Turtle and Tecumseh, when they were united, when they were allies, when they were friends, they were able to defeat the U.S. Army. They defeated the U.S. Army, one of the worst disasters for the U.S. Army on U.S. soil. And like I said, as an American, I don't like that, but as a Native American lover, as a lover of the oppressed, as a lover of justice, I, this is fantastic. This is awesome. So in the defeat of St. Clair, which is one year later, 900 are going to get killed. You had Blue Jacket was there, Alexander McKee and Simon Gurdy. So I wonder if Blue Jacket, Alexander McKee, and Simon Gurdy was at Hamar's defeat, too, a year earlier. So the Northwest Indian Wars was also called Little Turtles War. So all the wars were called Little Turtles War. All of them was this Me Si Kanakwa. This Me Si Kanakwa. Me Si Kanakwa. This was a war. It should be the Me Si Kanaka Wars. The Me Si Kanaka Wars, if that's the Northwest Wars. I mean, both of the major wars, it was him. It was Little Turtle. So in that very first ambush, when you have Josiah Harmer, H Hamar, who sends in Hardin, a man named Hardin, which is a, a Kentucky general, I believe. Hardin, because there's a Hardin County. Hardin goes up to western, you know, Ohio, and the natives all flee. And how they got, you know, they say they was ambushed, which actually, I mean, just the, the Native Americans were just superior when it came to fighting techniques. I mean, that sounds amazing, but here was one little, you know, caveat to that. When you have Hardin, who goes to the western, you know, Ohio to go kill, when you have, you know, America, when you have the American troops that go to the western Ohio to go kill the Native Americans, Miami, Shawnee, Delaware, and the Ottawa, when Hardin first gets there, the natives flee, right? They burnt down the villages or what have you. But after the natives flee, Hardin and the militia pursues the natives. The natives all run away, and the militia just chase them. 
And when the militia chases the natives, they're going in a different direction. They get, they become so scattered, and like I said before, some of them didn't even have a gun. They became scattered, alone. They were very vulnerable, and many got killed that way. Apparently 150 got killed, so like I said, the numbers are crazy. There's three days of fighting, and I think 183 total is going to get killed because... 900, they say St. Clair's defeat is like the worst. If St. Clair's defeat is the worst, then Hamar's defeat would be the second worst. But I did pull up a couple of other worses. Task Force Smith, North Korea invades Kasserin Pass, George Marshall, Little Bighorn. So there's other losses. It's not, this isn't the only loss. But uh, October 22nd, 1790, Tecumseh help to stop the genociding, colonizing, imperialist, white pieces of shit. And I'm going to celebrate October 22nd every year as Tecumseh's Day because of that. Should it be Little Turtles Day? Maybe. Maybe it's all of them. Little Turtles Day, Tecumseh's Day. Who else was there at Hamar's defeat? Because apparently there's a, a thousand Native Americans there. At least... So, yeah, the, uh, you know, the parallels are, you know, the war on the Wabash, no congressional authority. Huh, we've been doing, you know, wars without Congress declaring it for quite some time. Here you have some ballot initiative in Colorado saying let's bolster the legislative branch. The U.S. Congress don't even know how to bolster their own legislative branch. They're the one that's supposed to declare the war. They don't declare the wars, but nobody gives a shit. Nobody, ah, who cares? Ah, it's just a formality. That's just the Constitution, you know. That's just how republics 